Ngayon po ay ating tatalakayin ang basic curriculum model. Una ang traditional, thematic, program, classical, and technological. So pag sinabi nating traditional curriculum, it is an educational curriculum which follows established guidelines and practices. This term can refer both to a curriculum as a whole, as in the set of courses which students must take to graduate and the order in which they are presented. So, traditional curriculum includes core subject and electives. Core subject usually include topics like math, science, history, and English. Development has been seen in planning for a sustained process of teaching and learning in a formal institutional setting. So, in a traditional curriculum, students usually learn by observing and listening to their teacher, studying facts and concepts in textbooks, and completing both test and written assignments. It's what most of us probably remember from our time as adolescents in the classroom. This technique consists of the teacher passing on information to the students, oftentimes in a lecture setting. So when we say thematic curriculum, this type is known as thematic learning. Teaching across the curriculum or integrated study. The thematic concept or approach to teaching integrates all subject areas under one team. It blends different subject lines and helps children associate with real-world ideas and basic academic skills. Then another one is thematic curriculum. Ano ba itong thematic curriculum? This type is known as thematic learning, teaching across the curriculum or integrated study. The thematic approach to teaching integrates all subject areas under one team. It blends different subject lines and helps children associate with real-world ideas and basic academic skills. Then, what are the advantages of thematic curriculum? Una, relevant topic. The approach focuses on topics relevant to learners, which encourages learners to involve actively. Second is real-world experiences. This approach also focuses on real-world experiences and their existing knowledge of the topic, making the lesson more reliable. The third is different learning styles. Renowned psychologists such as Bigotzi Brunner suggest that integrated subject matter increases the engagement of the whole brain. Next is active. It is an active approach that encourages the active participation of the learners and keeps them engaged. Now, that is, or those are the advantages of thematic curriculum. But there is also what we call the disadvantage or disadvantages of the thematic curriculum. First is identity loss. Due to integration, subjects lose their specific identity and meaning. Loss of interest. Few learners may lose interest in the team and may be demotivated to participate. Third is interruption in connection. If a learner misses a day's lesson, they can miss out on a lot. Another one that we are going to discuss is program curriculum. 
Now, what is program curriculum? A program curriculum refers to an educational approach that utilizes a structured sequence of learning materials and activities, often presented in a predetermined order. One of the defining characteristics of the program curriculum is its adap adaptability. The heart of the program curriculum beats with a set of defining characteristics that mark it as a revolutionary approach to learning. These characteristics intertwine to create an environment that encourages engagement, personalization, and mastery. Some major characteristics of program curriculum are mentioned, like for example, number one is self-paced learning, allows students to progress through the material at a speed that suits their individual grasp of the content. Second is structured sequencing, ensures that concepts are presented in a logical order, building upon foundational knowledge. Third, immediate feedback. A hallmark of the approach provides learners with timely validation and correction, fostering a deeper understanding of the subject matter. Third is the or fourth is the adaptive and personalized the program curriculum. It is inherently adaptive adjusting to the needs and preferences of each learner. And then the last one is promotion of active engagement passive. Learning takes a backseat in the program curriculum where active engagement is the driver. Now, the importance of program curriculum, when we say importance, syempre po, kahalagahan. So, the significance of the program curriculum cannot be understood. What is classical curriculum? So, classical curriculum, if you're going to study about this, it is model or a model which is based on the educational philosophies and practices of ancient Greece and Rome. It emphasizes the study of classical literature, history, philosophy, and languages as a way to develop critical thinking and cultivate moral and intellectual virtues. It is also a model, or in this model, the curriculum focuses on the liberal arts and humanities with an emphasis on the study of original works and texts. It aims to develop students' ability to think critically, reason logically, and express themselves eloquently. Assessments in the classical curriculum model may include oral presentation essays and examination. Now, what makes classical education so effective? It is largely because of its approach to how and when students are taught. Regardless of their learning style, children learn in three paces or stages. What is that? Or what are those three stages? Grammar, logic or dialect, and rhetoric. It is known as the, in the grammar stage, K-6, to six, students are naturally adapt at memorizing true songs, chants, and rhymes. If you can get children in the stage to sing or chant something they will remember or something they will remember it for a long time. In the dialect or logic stage like grade 7 to 9, teenage students are naturally more argumentative and begin to question authority and facts. They want to know the why of something, the logic behind it. So the rhetoric stage grades 10 to 12 is naturally when students become independent thinkers and communicators. They study and practice rhetoric which is the art of persuasive speaking and effective writing that pleases and delights the listener. 
Again, it is the approach to teaching students based on their developmental stage that makes this approach so very effective. Now, regardless of their learning style, there are three paces or stages. We have grammar, logic or dialectic or dialectic rhetoric known as the trivium. So, yun tatlong yun ang stages or pages. Now, we also have what we call technological curriculum. This includes internet and software-based programs. The internet provides multi-sensory, interactive learning via multimedia learning. Software provides the same in a more controlled environment. So, the learning styles, multi-sensory, visual, auditory. Now, what is the use of technology in curriculum? The curriculum development process can incorporate technology by selecting digital learning resources, adapting online and blended learning models, utilizing educational software and applications, and integrating emerging technolo technologies such as virtual reality, artificial intelligence, and data analytic. So, example, Google Classroom. So, it is a free blended learning platform developed by Google for educational institution that aims to simplify cheating, distributing, and grading assignments. The primary purpose of Google Classroom is to streamline the process of sharing or sharing files between teachers and students. We also have the digital readers and tablets. Increasingly, schools are looking to replace the bulkier hard copy textbooks with digital ones that are accessible by a tablet. Kaya't may mga tablet silang ginagamit pamalit sa kanilang mga aklat. So, what are the pros? They eliminate the need for students to carry around a heavy backpack full of books. Yun yun eh. Diba? So, nalilesen or nababawasan yung maraming bitbit ng mga mag-aaral. Also, they provide a centralized access place for all reading materials. And then, the regular updates of digital content eliminates the cost of purchasing new textbook edition every few years. Now, we also have, we also have what we call mobile technology. Rather than banning cell phones and other mobile devices from use during class, some schools are incorporating this technology into the learning process through educational apps. Anong pros nito? Ang pros po nito, the wide variety of available apps offers the opportunity for students to engage in their own learning process. Educational apps provide the opportunity to personalize learning to each student. There are many different kinds of technology or electronic equipment used to enhance instruction found in the classroom. Most likely, computers or laptops. It may be used by teachers to research and design lessons or students to access the internet, practice typing, or create presentation another one is projector one advantage of projected visual is that the teacher can maintain eye contact with the students projected instructional media are those channels of communication which promote the effectiveness of instruction and help the teacher to communicate idea effectively to his students why use technology in curriculum Advantages are motivate students, provides unique applications, new approaches, more productive, can capture and hold attention, can easily gather wide information, career preparation, and enhance critical thinking. While the disadvantages are costly budget constraints, second, rapid change, third, compatibility issue, and last, Difficult to access. Halimbawa, ang lokasyon na kinalalagyan mo ay mahina ang signal or nasa death spot, 
yun, mahirap talagang makasagap ng internet. Kaya sa pagkakataon ito, mga kaibigan, nakita natin kung gaano kahalaga ang technology pagdating sa curriculum. At yan ang basic curriculum model na kung saan ay dapat na ginagawa o ginagamit ng atin pong mga tagapagturo. Maraming salamat sa inyong pakikinig, magandang hapon at God bless everyone.